Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're talking about street photography at night or night photography, shooting in low light conditions, etc. The content is biased towards the Ricoh GR3, although any camera that has got auto ISO settings could adopt this principle. There will be timestamps below so you can jump forward to the sections that interest you. Um, let's get started. Now, a lot of photographers use uh, shutter speed priority or aperture priority, but I'm going to recommend that you do neither of those things and actually use manual mode instead. Now, why would you use manual mode? Because we've got auto ISO. So auto ISO is actually going to take care of the exposure for us. And this allows us to be free when it comes to setting the shutter speed and the aperture. The first decision to make is how high you prepared to let your ISO go. Now, personally, I, I set it to 12,800. Although some people say 6,400, this is a personal choice. You can do some research, you can take some test shots and look at them yourself, and then decide what your threshold is. There's actually a website, and I'll link it below, called Have Camera Will Travel, and in there, the guy has done a lot of testing with the Ricoh GR3, and he actually has samples you can go and look at. So if you don't want to take the time to do all the testing, I would recommend that you go and read his article. It's really interesting. And he also um, gives some feedback on software that you can use to actually reduce the noise if it's too high for you. In the next section, I'm actually going to show you the menu of the GR3 and we'll talk you through each setting that I use. Before that though, let's look at how I use the camera when I'm actually shooting. Because obviously street photography, it's, um, there's a lot of variation as you're walking along. It could be a shop front, it could be a, a street vendor, it could be a couple walking along a dark street. It can be many things, so we have to be able to adjust the settings very quickly and very easily. And that's what this setup allows you to do. So let's go and take a look. Let's discuss how I actually use this in practice. So obviously it's in manual mode. So the shutter speed is on the on the front dial here and the aperture is on the rear one. We've also got exposure compensation on this wheel that we can move. But I'll come back to that later. So when I change the shutter speed, you'll see that nothing's happening to the exposure because the ISO is doing the dance, right? So the ISO compensates for changes in shutter speed and changes in aperture. So we can change each each of these independently of each other and still maintain the same exposure via auto ISO, which I think is absolutely fantastic. This gives a lot more flexibility when you're actually shooting because if you're walking down a busy street at night or you're at a night market or something with a bit of action going on, your settings are not going to stay constant. You know, you you want to be able to adjust things as required so that's how i do it and i think it works well so you can just i typically keep it about f4 and then adjust the shutter speed based on what i need if 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 no one's moving quickly i can set it at 100 or 125th but if there's some action then maybe set it a little bit higher and just let the iso go up you know i don't care because later on i can fix the noise in post-production if I need to, if it's a great shot. Um, what else would I say about the focus? So yeah, this, this pinpoint AF, it literally, it's very, it's very sharp. You can just choose exactly where you want. And I also like to use the, the touch screen sometimes. So you, you can pose your shot first and then tap the area that you want to be in focus. And, a quick tip to get the focus point back to the center would be to hold the OK button until you get this symbol in the corner there and then press and hold the OK button again and the focus point jumps back to the center and then just press OK to get rid of that little icon there. I hope this makes sense to you and uh, yeah, tr give it a shot, try it out. Here are my settings for night photography. For focus, I use pinpoint AF because I like to have just a small reference point when I'm focusing so I can be sure that 
the thing that I want is actually in focus. Next, I turn on face and eye detection because if I'm shooting around people, then I want to be able to get their faces sharp. And so far, I find this works pr uh, pretty good. AF assist light turned off, snap focus distance 1.5 meters, and I have the full press snap on because I like to have that extra option of a snap focus. This is one reason why I don't like to use the back button focusing technique that some other people recommend. Because if you do that, then you lose the snap focus distance option. If you've disabled the focusing on the actual shutter button. Exposure mode is M, so I'm shooting in manual mode. Metering, I use multi-segment. ISO setting, okay, this is important. So upper limit 12,800, lower limit 100, and minimum shutter speed, I set to 125th, but I don't believe it makes a difference shooting in manual mode anyway. Okay, so let's continue down. White balance auto. The drive mode, I use continuous. I like continuous because it's better to take extra shots and then delete them than to not have them in the first place because you can't go back because street photography is not a rehearsal right we, we only get one chance file format i just shoot raw i don't i don't bother shooting jpeg i mean you can shoot jpeg if you want but i don't bother with it aspect ratio normal three three to two color space i like to use adobe rgb i think it, the, the gamut provided is is a little wider RGB is particularly suited for web. If you're just going to post to the web, then RGB is okay. But if you want to make prints, then Adobe RGB is better. And I like to shoot at night using positive. So it's it's in color. So I can see the different colors. Anything else? Oh, shake reduction I'll leave on. Unless it's on a tripod, then I'll turn it off. That's pretty much it for that. Then I'll go down to function button setting. So the one at the back of the camera, the function button. I change this to face detection, eye detection. This way I can you can turn it on and off quickly without having to go into the uh, main menu. And let me uh, see what else I said here. I also like to use touch AF. That gives an extra option. And I set it to AF point plus focus plus shoot. In this section, I'm going to show you some images from a shoot I did the other day using this technique. Don't forget to stay to the end because at the end I'll show you exactly how you can save this preset.
Once you're happy with the settings and you've gotten used to shooting like this, I would recommend that you actually save this as a preset. So go to Customize Settings on the number one tab there and then go to Save Settings. And that, as you can see, I've already got quite a few saved here. This is one I'm experimenting with by uh, Adrian Sanguinetti. I quite like his videos. He actually does things a little differently, which I like. So for this one, mine is this one called the uh, Night and Low Light. I'm not going to do it now, but uh, so all you, all you do is just literally press OK, enter a name. And then once you've entered the name, you can just save it there. And then later on, it's going to come back out. And then later on, you can assign them. As you can see there, there's U1, U2, U3. Um, so we can actually save six presets and use any three of them at one time. So I'll just go back out one more. You see here that we have rename and recall. So if you want to change a preset, you just go to recall. And then you would set, um, so you choose U1, U2 or U3. And then you would change it. So, for example, if I want to change user 2, I'll just go over here to this one. And now if I go back, now it's on, you see I've changed it to Sanguinetti. And to change it back to the night mode, just go here and then back to box 3 there. So night and low light. And there we go. So now if I turn to U2 on the screen, it would activate that actual setting let me just go back so you see if i if i change it now to to user two i can see there we go user two and you can see there there's a little confirmation as to your settings and bear in mind this thing it saves everything the gr3 is amazing it saves everything i've noticed one thing to be aware of and that is if you use the exposure compensation it's on the the ring at the back here that you have to twiddle around now i've had some instances where it goes crazy it will just jump up to like plus five it tends to go up more than it goes down but here it's here it's behaving itself actually no it's not there you go now i can take it down i'm trying to take it down but it's just not going i don't know why this is is it my camera that's the problem or is it is there some firmware glitch i don't know but i can't take the iso down now no matter what i do so see it's plus five and i can't take it down i think i'm going to drop rico support an email to see if this is the issue if you get this problem the fix is to go to another mode set the ev back to zero and then just go back to that mode again and then it's it's it's, it's okay um yeah It's working okay now. Could just be something with the contacts on my camera, I guess. But why should it work one time and then not another? I can take it down below. Now it's gone plus again. Minus 7, minus 1, minus 1.3. It's like if you move it too quickly, it freaks it out. Minus 5. Okay, well there you go. So yeah, just test it and let me know in the comments if you have the same problems. Okay guys, that concludes this video. I hope you found it useful and if you did so, please consider subscribing if you've not already done so. And of course, hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.